I'm gonna fly Bhutan Airline A319, fly to Paro, one hour, 15 minute flights. If you don't know where Bhutan is, it's a landlocked country in the Himalayas between China, India, and Nepal. Hello, welcome aboard, Sam. Uh, my name is Chenga, and I'm the chief pilot of uh, Bhutan Airlines. You can see a pointed peak there with some uh, snow getting blown off. That is the Everest. That is the uh, uh, highest point on earth, Mount Everest, Mount Nozi. And the height of Mount Nozi is 8516 meters. The last one that you see is Mount Makalu. That is number five, fifth highest mountain world. So the airport is just here behind this. Just behind this cloud. So what you're doing, you're landing for runway 33. The only at the last leg you'll able to see them because of the hills. And I'm a Buddhist, so I have to pray to God. Oh my god, this is so beautiful, so amazing. This is my friend Sonam. He's actually organized my whole trip. Yeah. yeah. He's a really good guy, he's into aviation, so if you guys like to come to Bhutan, contact Sonam. Please. It was my biggest dream to land in the cockpits into Paro. It was amazing. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Oh, here's my name, Sam. It's an honor, thank you so much. You're welcome. welcome to Bhutan, a country was closed to the world until the 1970s. Tourist numbers are limited as the visa costs $250 a day per person, but that includes your guide, transfer, sightseeing, food, and up to free star accommodation. Bhutan is a very peaceful and spiritual country. In Bhutan, people prefer happiness over wealth. You forget all your trouble when you arrive in Bhutan. Just beautiful. It's taken my breath away. And the ones that you see on that side are the miniature uh, stupas. Yeah, lots of little are, stupa. Yes. You can see the mantras, these are the mantras. Mm. So Mantra. if you rotate, rotate. At one, yep. you get a thousand now, millions of mantras at once. All ah, right, you get more mantras. Yeah. The drive from Paro to capital Finhu took one and a half hours. I chose to stay at the Meridian Finhu because of my Marriott Bonvoy membership. The Zaza Suite. It's Tata. Tata, sweet. Wow, look at this. All right, while we in Bhutan, I have to try their traditional costume. Look at this. Like, so hopefully they can change and then I will look like them very soon. And many people think this is a bathroom, actually. It's like a room. Real Bhutanese. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We have the biggest pocket in the world. Biggest, biggest pocket, pocket in the world. world. Yeah. Biggest pocket. Oh yeah. Wow. yeah. This is like our local food. Mm. Uh, so this is the spinach fried one, spinach and this fried. is uh, the beef, mm. and this is the pork, and this is the vegetable with potato and beans. Right. And this is like spinach, spinach. with cheese. With cheese. With cheese. Oh, excellent. I like spinach with cheese. Well, I guess I really do look like a Bhutan guy. Bon appetit. This dish is called uh, chili and cheese. It's actually almost like a Bhutan national dish. Um, no comment on the chili, but the cheese sauce is yummy. Bhutan has a lot of mountains, therefore the roads are never straight, and it felt like a turn every nine seconds. Driving is challenging as you might get car sick. I'm heading to the beautiful Fanaka Valley today. So in every Bhutanese car, you will find something like this one. They will have the either the pictures of the god yeah. or their root guru's picture. Oh. In a way to keep themselves, you know, have the belief that they're being protected 
while going on a long journey drive and all those things. And these are some of the things given to me by the my root guru, my guru to protect yeah. me from the you know evil forces or from the accidents or anything like that. the mountain it's really beautiful here there's 108 stupa here I met these friends from Denmark and I was curious they were singing on top of the hill here and they just told me it was a good morning song so you have a good day start after the song, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, going for hiking from here. Hiking is about two hours. Okay, I got changed back to my Bhutan costume, in which I feel like a local here and feel so comfortable. I'm going to show you the beautiful, beautiful valley right behind me here. You can see a nunnery in very far end here, beautiful green sites, and also there's a monk university in the top of the hill. as a Bodhi tree because under Bodhi tree Buddha got the enlightened. How old is this tree you think? It is almost like uh, 200 years. So every fortress in the Bhutan is divided into two sections. One is the monastic section and one is the administrative section. While visiting the uh, monastery here, I met Chris Nathan from uh, Cochin, yeah, from Cochin. Kerala. Mum and son visiting Bhutan together. Yeah, Don't they look alike? Yay! Yeah. Many said Bhutan is one of the happiest places on earth. I felt very happy, very close to nature. Bhutan is also a deeply superstitious country. They believe that viruses protect them from evil. For Bhutan citizens, it is mandatory to wear national dress. The national sports in Bhutan is archery. This is my second hobby, huh? Dart. <laughs> I need more practice in my hobby. new hobby of mine. Watch out guys. <laughs> Shorter distance, second try. It doesn't land the right way. I better go back flying first class. Whoa! Well done! That's amazing! Look at this. So this is the awesome bath with the tub, wooden tub. And then there's the hot water. The hot water is being made through the stones that are being heated up with the wood. Okay, the stone is underneath, inside. It's right there on the other chamber. Oh, it's, on, it's outside. outside. It's outside yes. where it's heating. Okay. Oh yeah, it's quite nice actually. It's heated very nice. Even if you want some more 
hot water, you can ask them to put some more stones in there. I'm in the uh, hot stone bath here, which you can see like here, there's actually a broken window. This is where they're adding the stone to heat up the water. Doji tuna. Doji tuna in Bhutan means one more hot stone. Guys, do you know that there's no traffic lights in Bhutan? Um, they tried to install the lights, but it was not popular. So they used the traffic police at the uh, key junctions. So this is the only country I know, there's no traffic lights. meant to be the most handsome guy in the world with a perfect face, perfect eye, perfect nose, perfect mouth. On my last day, I made a failed attempt to hike the tiger nest. I only made it to the first viewing point before I have to turn back to catch my flight. This is my least favorite part of Bhutan as all the tourists are doing the same hike. Be careful, the hiking paths are narrow and crowded. I suggest to use a horse to hike to the first stop and walk up afterwards to save some energy. This is the way to do it, very strong horse. Tiger nest right behind us. You have to climb all the way there. This is just number one point here. Now I have a flight to catch, so I can't climb anymore. So I have to go to the airport to fly. Let's fly together. This country got so much to offer. I learned, especially the environment. It's so environmental friendly. They're very conscious of preserving the culture. I learned that Bhutan is the only carbon negative country producing negative carbon emission. I'm looking forward to come back again to Bhutan. So Tashi Telak and Tajin Telak. Bhutan is certainly one of the most interesting country I have visited. It is very peaceful and spiritual country that so far no mass tourism has evaded. It is such a unique place that I can't just focus on aviation when visiting the country. There are plenty of natural beauty to see and interesting myths to explore in Bhutan. I hope you like my vlog.